Today, you're still watching our special edition of our Independence Day broadcast. Uh, this is Plus TV Africa. My name is Ekene, and I have in the studio with me Seydou Basharu, who's just joined us. He's a uh, an entrepreneur, I almost called you a hustler. <laughs> You're welcome to the broadcast. Thanks, thanks for having it's me. It's a pleasure to have you. And also, we have Donald Duke, an ex-governor. Thank you. Unless you also want to join, <laughs> join well, Sage's camp. We're all hustling in our, in our own corners. <laughs> <laughs> all Nigerians are hustlers. OK, so we're still on the topic of leadership. And off air, we're having our little banter. Okay. And so let's just carry on, you know, because I'm, I'm yet to, and maybe I, I want to stand in the place of the average man in the streets and say, as, as the governor, ex-governor was, was referring to, he talked of a buy-in, collective res responsibility, identifying a common goal. All those things sound sweet to the ear. But let's talk like people who see the situation as it is Who's going to now. be responsible for bringing How that How do we to get happen? to that point? Where, and I mentioned two things. I'll just quickly throw them in so you can uh, you know, include them in your explanation. Yeah. How do we get a mass, a population such as ours, a lot of people are not educated enough about their rights, about the things they should be concerned about. This is why I feel largely we're being manipulated when it comes to election period, you know, on issues of tribalism and so on. So we don't have an educated populace as we should. And then we don't have a, a leader, let me go away from the word leadership. We don't have a leader that is sending out the, 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 the message that come together, I want to hear what you, you're saying and what you say has value. Or am I getting that wrong? Please yeah, yeah, take, it, take yeah. it from there. Uh, I want to say first that, well, the leadership of any society is just a typical reflection of that society as it is. Now, going back to what you have said, um, there are so many ways we could break this down to have a buy-in from, you know, citizens. If you want to get, you know, that thing that's very important to them, uh, you could start, you know, campaigning from, say, local government. So who is doing the campaigning? Let's just identify Through the local, players. We have, we have institutions that are already there. We have local government with their structure that is already there. And these people interact with, with the masses. So the local government the should campaign. Own, they should have, OK, so I, you could have, what you want to do is get that thing that is most important to all of us. Okay. What are the things that we want to push as a nation? Is education important to us? Is um, corruption important to us? What is that thing that we all agree is important for us? as a nation. So how do we go about identifying it? So you could have like a few of those things, like is it agric, and push it down, get the polls from the local government. What do you guys think so about So whose responsibility is it to go getting the polls of the people? That's what I'm saying, the local government. Okay, we I have, just wanted you to we identify have, we that. We have that structure. Okay. These people interface okay. with your everyday people. Okay. They speak their language. Okay. You know, it's very easy. Um, this is what we want to do. There's uh, farming, like the government here now is strong on farming, agri. They want to, you know, they want Nigeria to be the next food basket for West Africa or Africa, if it is. But you need the buy-in from the masses. Okay. The so reason I go seem that pains it? to pin you down to local government is, would you say that they're doing that now? So we want to assess. Not very well. Okay. Not very well. They're trying, but you know, it's it's gradual. You know, but um, there's a whole lot that needs to be done in that space as well. Okay. Back to you, Mr. Duke. So you wanted to help us understand the difference between a leader and leadership to better understand your your own uh, position on things. You know, several years ago, fifty nine years ago, we agitated for independence. Was it an individual or a collective of people okay. who asked for it? That's leadership. There was not just one person who was asking for independence, right? And as he said, you had leaders across the board. You had leaders at various sectors. You had premiers of the various regions. Mm -hmm. You had the folks like Enaro. And then, so there's already uh, have been, we've already identified a broad spectrum. And that's what I call the leadership, right? The driver is a leader, but <laughs> he can't go anywhere without that leadership. And that's why I keep on, I don't want to, I don't want to hang the premise on an individual because okay. it's transient. Okay. And that's why, you know, you have various things or oh, green revolution because it goes, it all, everything is put on the 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 shoulders shoulders of or an individual. of an individual it shouldn't be that mm -hmm. it should be our national goal and that's why it's sustainable so that you have this thing called continuity which has eluded us 
because if I come up with what I think Nigeria should look like and is not bought in by the rest of Nigeria, the next guy that comes after me is going to do his own thing. And that's why you don't have continuity. So if we identify, you know, I'm sorry to use this example, when we identify that we use Cross River State, Okay, because it's a buy into tourism, people have found out that their lives there's something in there for them, okay. right? Um, regardless of who the governor is, we're not worried, we know that tourism will always be on the plate, and mm. so those who invested in that sector are confident. Okay, okay? I like that example. Otherwise, you keep on, and that's I mean, look, there was a time in this country. We spent billions to develop Ajaokuta. We wanted to have a manufacturing sector. We wanted to be independent in this and that. The next guys are coming in, regardless of what had been spent in that sector, right? They just moved on. So you have Ajaokuta at Moribond. It's one of the biggest still um, yes. installations anywhere in the world, but it doesn't mean anything to us. What is our collective as a national goal? Okay, it's but after that, then we now, then, the lead, then you have something that the leader and the leadership can drive. That's oh. what I'm saying. I'm okay. not saying that, I'm not downplaying the importance of leader leadership. Mm. I'm just saying, let's have a goal so we know where the leadership is taking us to. Okay. Well, um, Seydou, some would say it's a vicious cycle. You seem to have a bit. I'm, no, I'm, listening. I'm listening. She's buying, she's no, buying. No, buying in. <laughs> I'm listening. Um, I, can, I can only say that much. Um, Seydou, um, some would say it's a vicious cycle um, because in as much as we're trying to say that we want a buy-in, some have argued that, that what that looks like is true federalism, and at the moment we're practicing a unitary system. Right. And even when you have people who have put, put out their voices or you know, called out for a reform in this sector, the leader and the leadership seem to have closed their ears to them. So where you have this kind of a, do you say, a roadblock, where do we go from here? Hmm. Um, <laughs> people have been shut up. Maybe their voice is not loud enough. Well, so the because problem comes back to us. It comes back to us. <laughs> if we're persistent, we insist that this is what we want, okay. as we've seen in other clients. You know, you keep making, you know, agitating for the same thing. Eventually, somebody will listen. You know, we can't put all our eggs in one basket and assume that one person would, you know, you know, um, agitate for the rest of us. It has to be a collective struggle. If we feel what we're getting now is not good enough, Collectively, the voice should be louder. We should get more people who we you know, give up would raise their dreams. voice. Exactly. Um, I was just going to add earlier that what we're experiencing in Nigeria now is very similar to you know what we as businessmen. If you look in Nigeria, how many businesses you know have lasted three, four, five generations? You know, you don't have them because the vision, succession planning processes, and all of those things are not there. It's the same thing you need in your country. Okay. As a country, we need to have, in uh, China, I think, is it China or Japan? They have a 100-year plan. As a country, we must decide on what we want to do, like he, he shared earlier. Do we want to be like an ag 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 agrarian society? Is farming, we want agri less specialized, less specialized, let's put all our investments in farming, build capacity, send people to countries, Israel, everywhere where they've done exceptionally well in agri, and put, you know, make sure within a certain maybe five, 10 years, you know, we build that sector and move on to the next thing, you know? So we need to find, you know, that common goal and there are ways to go about it because you just can't come as a president and say, look, for me, this is where I think we should go without buy-in from the rest of us, which is why, you know, this fails all the time. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Um, so Seydou and uh, obviously Mr. Duke are saying that we all need to collectively bring our voices together and buy into to the vision. And uh, first of all, Mr. Duke is saying we need to identify the vision. We're going on a, a brief break, and when we come back, we'll continue this conversation about leadership and the way forward. Stay tuned.